Hi, Mr. Richards here. Today's grade seven, unit four, lesson 13 lesson is on measurement error. As we look at measuring a soccer field to get started here, a soccer field is 120 yards long. Han measures the length of the field using a 30 foot long tape measure and gets a measurement of 358 feet, 10 inches. So what is the amount of air? Well, the actual field is 120 yards long. We know there's three feet in a yard. So if we multiply by three, this 120 yards is 360 feet. And now if we look to say, what was the amount of air? The actual field was 360 feet and no inches. He measured 358 feet, 10 inches. And I need to subtract to get this amount of air. So now I can't take 10 inches away from zero inches. So I need to borrow a foot from here, which takes us to 359 feet. And this zero inches is now 12 inches because there's 12 inches in a foot. 12 inches minus 10 inches is two inches. And 359 feet minus 358 feet is just one foot. So the amount of air is one foot, two inches, or since there's again, 12 inches in a foot, you could come up with a solution of 14 inches as well. As one times 12 is 12 plus the two is 14. Express the air as a percentage of the actual length of the field. So we need to take our air, our amount of air, and divide it by our actual length of the field. Now, our air we found to be 14 inches. Our actual field was 120 yards. Now notice we have two different units here, inches and yards. And that's a little bit of a problem here in the fact that we need to get these to be the same units before we divide. And so our 120 yards, we already established at 360 feet by multiplying by three feet in a yard. Then if we multiply by 12 inches in a foot, this is 4,320 inches. So our amount of air once again was 14 inches of air. Our 120 yards is equal to 4,320 inches. And once we have that, we can divide 14 by 4,320, and we get about this crazy little decimal here, 0 0.00324. And if we take this and move our decimal point over two spots to the right, we're going to end up with 0 0.3 2, 4% air. That's really a pretty small percent air when you consider it. Now, when you look for possible reasons for this air, a soccer field is quite long. And so maybe he didn't uh, position the tape measure precisely every time he measured. Um, Maybe he didn't go in completely a straight line, or maybe he simply didn't correctly use the correct measuring tape. So let's continue on. Now measuring our classroom is an activity we did in class. And so depending on the classroom that you have, that you're measuring, uh, you may end up with getting some different things here. And so, um, I'm going to put in some of the sample numbers uh, that I found on the 
Illustrative Mathematics website just to uh, kind of run through the activity and so you can see what this would be like. And so I, the teacher or your teacher, would give you three items to measure. Keep using the paper rulers from the earlier activity. And so if you have paper rulers or different rulers, you could use those. Between you and your partner, decide who will use which ruler. All right. Measure the three items assigned by your teacher and record your measurements in the first column of the appropriate table. So you have a centimeter ruler and a millimeter ruler here. So the items we're going to list here are an eraser length, a table width, and a book height. Now, for the actual lengths, In centimeters here, 19, 110 and 4 tenths, and 27 and 5 tenths. The measure length in centimeters, again, just kind of making these numbers up, and I'm actually not the fine folks at Illustrative Mathematics did. 19, 106, and 28. And then using the millimeter ruler, the actual length here. 19 again, 110 and 4 tenths, and 27 and 5 tenths. The eraser length we measured using the millimeter ruler was 19 and 1 tenth, 106, and this time 27 and 7 tenths, so we're able to be more precise with the millimeter ruler. The difference here for this column, 19 minus 19 is 0. There's a difference of 4 and 4 tenths with the table width and 5 tenths with the book height. The eraser length, again, a difference here of 1 tenth, of 4 and 4 tenths, and simply 2 tenths. Now the percentage, we're going to take the difference and divide by the actual. So 0 divided by 19 is, well, 0 percent. 4 and 4 tenths divided by 110 and 4 tenths is going to get us about 4%. 5 tenths divided by the actual 27 and 5 tenths would get us 1 and 8 tenths percent. Continuing on here, 1 tenth divided by 19 is half a percent, 5 tenths of a percent. We already calculated the 4 and 4 tenths divided by 110 and 4 tenths above. Still going to be 4%. And then the 2 tenths difference, or error, if you will, divided by the actual 27 and a half is going to get us 7 tenths of a percent. And so one of the big takeaways from this lesson needs to be that you can find the percent error by taking the amount of air, so your difference, and dividing it by the actual amount. And so for all of these, you can see the actual, I'm sorry, the difference divided by the actual, the difference divided by the actual, and so on, and so on, and so on. And so as we look now to our summary of lesson 13, when we are measuring using a ruler or measuring tape, we can get a measurement that is different from the actual length. It happens. This could be because we are positioning the ruler incorrectly, or it could be because the ruler is not very precise. There's always at least a small difference between the actual length and a measured length, even if it's a microscopic difference. Here are two rulers with different markings. You can see the top ruler is in centimeters, the second ruler is in millimeters, and so that second ruler is easier to get a measurement to the nearest tenth of a centimeter uh, than the first. For example, a line that's actually six and two tenths centimeters long might be measured to be six centimeters long by the first ruler. So you'd be off by two tenths of a centimeter because of that measurement error because your tool wasn't precise enough. And so the measurement error is the positive difference between the measurement and the actual value. Measurement error is often expressed as a percentage of the actual value. We always use a positive number to express measurement error and when appropriate, use words to describe whether the measurement is greater than or less than the actual value. 
For example, if we get six centimeters when we measure a line that's actually six and two tenths centimeters long, then the measurement error is two tenths of a centimeter or about three and two tenths percent because the two tenths error divided by the six and two tenths that it actually is, is about uh, 32 thousandths or three and two tenths percent. And so again, a key takeaway here is that to find your error, take the amount of error, and this is going to be a positive number, and divide it by the actual, and in this case, the actual measurement. So that's how you can find percent error. And that is it for this lesson, grade seven, lesson 13 from unit four on measurement error. Good luck.